so the next one is from uh, Jane McAlevey's No Shortcuts. Um, and, and she breaks it down into advocacy, mobilizing, and organizing. Um, advocacy and or mobilizing are directed at people who support your cause already. Uh, organizing is a strategic plan to win over those who don't agree. Um, while I don't necessarily agree that you have to be changing people's minds to be organizing necessarily, um, I do really like the idea of understanding there's a difference. Um, you know, I, I think too often we get stuck in calling mobilizing existing supporters organizing. Mm -hmm. And it's a big part of why we don't grow um, because we're not out trying to, and you know, this is very much pointed towards those who don't agree um, for a green orient and that, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's her, that's McAlvey's language. <clears throat> but for green socialist organizing, for grassroots, you know, independent organizing, I think it's not so much those who don't agree, but those who are disengaged, right? Um, the Green Party and independent socialists or you know, organizers need to see the largest voting bloc in the country every election, non-voters, as our greatest, you know, opportunity. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I think understanding the difference between mobilizing the people you have and organizing in those you don't. And it could be that they disagree with you, but it could be just that they don't, not even that they don't know, but they just aren't engaged politically um, mm -hmm. and that you need to then, you know, get them engaged. So while I think that, you know, th this definition is a little harsh in what we call organizing, <laughs> um, I think it is a very important distinction. Um, so to break them down a little further, um, advocacy is supporting others, such as a union or an organization, to create social change on your behalf, uh, based in the belief that an elite can influence the current system on behalf of the people, yet generally does not involve the ordinary people in action or leadership. Um, I would say this is the Green Party wants to be the organization of social change, right? Um, and the struggle is we're trying to create one that isn't an elite and that does involve ordinary people and active leadership. Um, this, again, is where the perspective from which the author is coming from is not necessarily the green perspective. But I think it's a good, a good explanation of kind of a level of engagement, right? The people who donate but don't do it, they don't show up to anything, right? They want to support the party and they donate and that's all they do. Um, and that's a, a role that you know, what will happen throughout organizations. Mobilizing is things like protest rallies, attending and speaking at a city council meeting, um, inward bit based building oriented. Um, it's limited to those who support your cause, an issue which often results in an informal hierarchy that still does not include many ordinary people in leadership and decision making. Um, I think this is a perfect, you know, description of the not for profit, what's called what is often called in you know, the left, the not-for-profit industrial complex um, where you and, and uh, astroturf groups, right? Where it's, <laughs> we're, we're a community organization, but there's actually paid organizers taking usually taking direction from outside leadership um, who are, you know, guiding what's actually happening and, and what directing the energies of the community and members that are involved. Um, and then organizing is actively working to change the minds of those who disagree or who are not engaged in your cause. So I guess McAlevey even says who are not engaged. Uh, focus on a, building a mass movement of ordinary people, bases expanded through education and training with leaders emerging organically. So what what she's describing there is exactly what we're, you know, Greens are generally trying to organize towards. Um, you know, uh, the problem is we we haven't focused a whole lot on education and training, which is why the Green Socialist Organizing Project yeah, appears. That's why we're here. <laughs> um, you know, it's why I ran training stuff when I was young enough to be in the Young Eco Socialists. Um, so yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. yeah, I was, was going to jump in there and say um, the this book, No Shortcuts. I like that title 
uh, because it uh, it kind of reinforces uh, that there's no shortcut to actually organizing. And that's a mistake a lot of people make that like, well, if I set up a Twitter account or something, then that's organizing and then we're there. And then we built a movement. We're there. You know, and no, 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 no. There is no shortcut. Organizing is hard work and a lot of, um, well, we'll get to it in a moment, but a lot of conversations with people that that eventually change their mind and bring them over to your side and get more public awareness of issues and things like that. It takes time. It takes effort. And there is no shortcut. You just, you have to do it. Um, McAlevey's book is um, mostly oriented toward union organizing. Um, so if you're interested in workers and unions, that could be an interesting book for you. Um, like we're saying here, it's it's a little bit different from what we're trying to do as, as part of our green socialist movement in the Green Party. But I think especially the first chapter is pretty good because it, it discusses these differences. And you'll notice in those definitions, um, the first two are um, about like a professional class of people like uh, and this is always a, a problem with a lot of representative systems like we have um, you know in the US people get elected to Congress and things they get elected but they they essentially become career politicians like it's their career to be this this advocate essentially right and to speak about things but they're not really engaging with with average people they're not engaging with the people who the 50% of the electorate that doesn't vote, right? Like that's the reason they don't vote because like they never hear from uh, these advocates that supposedly speak for them. Um, and even when you're doing more of a mobilizing work, mobilizing leans a little bit more into, into grassroots energy, but it still tends to put this kind of professional group in charge of that mobilizing effort. There's still, um, you know, career politicians for, for lack of a better term, that are, are doing the um, decision-making of the group and they're just asking grassroots people, hey, come support this thing that we set up for you. Um, neither of these are particularly uh, bottom-up grassroots democratic type of uh, um, organizations. So when we're talking about organizing, we're talking about that last one there that's building a mass movement of ordinary people. We're not talking about career politicians. We're not saying that you have to be a professional at any of this. Uh, you don't have to be a professional at politics or organizing or anything. We want lots of average people because we believe in democracy. We believe in everyone in the community coming together and making decisions together. So we want this mass movement that we build up through education and training, teaching each other. Um, and our leaders, instead of being chosen by that professional elite class, they're leaders that naturally emerge, the people that... Um, it could be people that enjoy doing those type of leadership roles, but very often in socialist organizations, you also will actually just have um, a rotating system where everyone gets some experience in being, um, you know, the the manager or leader or something, so that everyone has um, their input in the organization. So I I really like the way that this is broken down because it reminds us um, of that organizing is building the mass movement that is inclusive that includes everyone in setting goals and setting um, decision-making on what actions to take or whatever. And all of us are um, building it together as opposed to a small group of professionals or donors or whatever it is calling the shots and then just expecting us to go with it. So that was my comment. <laughs> Back to you, Chris. Yeah, and before we go, I've, there are a couple of questions. <clears throat> so Andrew Hager wanted to know, working smarter on this help better than working harder i would say yes but there's no silver like there's no shortcuts right there's no <laughs> silver bullets um greens have this fatal flaw of seeing social media as a sol silver bullet that will save them from having to go out into their community and knock doors and have conversations and build real power you know build local community power um they think that if they tweet enough they'll convert enough people and somehow that will turn into a local party. I don't know what the theory is because um, it's not a good one. Right. So, but there's no, there's no, there's no silver bullet. Um, celebrity candidates, right. Um, going viral. None of these things are going to replace actually going out and doing the organizing social media, a, you know, a candidate that I'm not going to, not a celebrity, but a candidate that already has roots and connections in the community. These things are, you know, yeah. tools that can support, you know, good organizing and, and lead to successes. 
but they don't replace it, right? Yeah. Organizing, it's always got to come back into the organizing. That's why I like this definition of organizing with building the mass movement through education and training with leaders uh, organically emerging through setting up democratic processes. When you set up a Twitter account, you're not setting up a democratic process. <laughs> when you pull in a celebrity, that's not setting a democratic process. That's actually setting an elite to, to call the shots for the group, right? When we're organizing, it has to always be focused on building those democratic, from the bottom up, grassroots uh, democratic structures. And that's what's missing from what a lot of people do today. And when you meet, and when you set up the Twitter account, what you should do, and when you're active on Twitter, which you should be, right? And then someone in your local community sees you on Twitter and says, hey, I like you. The problem is if you only have the Twitter account and there's no actual material on the ground movement mm -hmm. or party, there's nothing for them to engage in, right? So you just made the conversion, which is really hard on, a, on social media and especially on Twitter, right? You, re, you actually <laughs> made the conversion, but there's nowhere to direct the energy. So it just mm -hmm. dissipates out into a void. Um, you know, I, and then I wanted to take one more to scout trooper wanted to know how can greens manage to get around the wrath of Dems and Republicans and be able to sit, get as large as them. I'm not sure what can be done considering the thousands of ballots needed or good spots, um, organizing. That's how we, um, <laughs> that's how we do it. Right. If, if you, so I live in Illinois, we've got one probably probably the most egregious U.S. House um, requirements, and then one of the most egregious presidential. We're not New York, which is 42,000 signatures in 45 days. We are 25,000 in 90 days, which is still just outrageous. Um, meanwhile, the Republicans and Democrats are collecting 3,000, right? Um, so that, you know, we need those numbers the way to the way to achieve it is to have a base to have a base that both is our existing connected and ready to sign when ready and have a base that is ready to go out and collect um you know so if if you know for example my house district um traditionally it takes sixteen thousand for a green or a republican or for a green or an independent or a, a libertarian to get on the ballot compared to about 750 for the Republicans and the Democrats. Um, so if you want to actually achieve that, you've got to have an on-the-ground operation. And if you don't have the on-the-ground operation, you might want to think about what your you know, short-term and mid-term goals are and whether or not running for this seat is actually what needs to be prioritized. Um, because the, the reality is the main, you know, Overcoming these obstacles in the states where we have them is part of what we have to strategize for. Um, you know, I, so organizing just is is key. Um, I I think it's also beyond uh, the ballot access too. Um, kind of reading into that question, I uh, the way I sort of interpret that too is also let's say um, pushback in the media, right? The um, the Democratic and Republican parties control a lot of the media and they can push out a message that says, you know, greens are terrible and, you know, um, try to confuse the issue on things or um, attack us or, or whatever's happening. And uh, that is true. But I think what's important to keep in mind is exactly what's on the screen here. The Republican and Democratic Party don't believe in actually having grassroots democracy. Um, they believe in an, an elite party. Uh, core controlling the party and then just, you know, the, the people that support them should just mobilize and do whatever they want. Um, they don't believe in actually organizing. So they don't have a connection with people in, in these communities. That's why so many voters are so disengaged and why they don't go vote and they don't feel like they should be participating in politics. They feel so alienated by the current system. Um, and in that, in that scenario, they can use corporate money or whatever to, you know, throw in the media um, whatever message they want. And maybe their core base listens to it, but not all the alienated people. The way we overcome that is by organizing and talking to those alienated voters and bringing them in and building our own movement. So when they, when they spend those corporate dollars and they send messages on the radio and they say, Chris is really terrible, you should never listen to him <laughs> on the radio or whatever it is, we've made those personal connections in the community. When the community hears that, they say, 
no, I've met Chris. Chris is a great guy. He comes by my door, you know, once a week and we chat about politics and we chat about how to improve the community. You know, once you have that relationship, um, it's much harder for them to attack the movement. And of course, it takes time to build that. That's that's part of the you can't expect overnight success here. But at the same time, once you've done that, you've taken an important step to, uh, to um, inoculating yourself against those type of tactics that the two parties use. Um, and then it's harder for them to attack you at that point. Um, so, you know, we just have to keep up with organizing. Uh, again, no shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really key to, um, you know, build those relationships. Um, so the, this guy that's running for U.S. House is a green in my district. And, um, he's very well known in the act in our community for his activism his activism is often very confrontational and adversarial um and he has successes though right like when i i live in springfield illinois which is where lincoln lived when he was elected president and um, there was a guy who ran a flag stand that sold confederate flags so john made a big deal about it and the guy stopped selling them Right. And he basically was like, you can't sell a Confederate flag in Lincoln's home, man. Like, you can't do that. And so, but John is also the type of person that when we got 14 inches of snow last month, he spent 12 hours out shuffling people out of their driveways for whatever they could for free or whatever they wanted to give him. He's an unemployed stay at home dad. He, you know, dug people out and he dug one guy out and, uh, you know, and said, hi, hey, they introduced themselves after they got the guy pushed out and he said his name and the guy goes, well, you're not what I thought you would be like. Right. And so that guy, the next time someone says John Keating's an asshole, <laughs> he'll go, no, he dug me out of the snow and he didn't even know me. Right. And when the guy said that's not he's John said, you know, this is what we do. We help people. Right. And so that interaction that one person, like Garrett said, will be like, I don't know if I take you seriously, person that's attacking, you know, <laughs> person. So it's all about those relationships, right? Um, the, the people who don't vote, you know, they've been lied to by politicians, right? And that, that's why I don't, you know, Greens that really lie, like lean hard on our platform, words ain't shit. Right. Um, lots of lots of politicians have come into these neighborhoods and said lots of things. Um, it's about building relationships. It's about working with people. Um, it's about showing that that grassroots move, you know, organizing and grassroots community work can actually succeed. Um, I, I worked as a field director for a community organization in the past, and you know, we had a we were doing a community cleanup in one of our neighborhoods, and. So we contacted the park district and they were great. You know, they gave us chainsaw, a whole trailer full of stuff that we could use to go through the community and clean up. And then we contacted public works about what to do with all the trash we collected because we're doing their job, right? This is, this is stuff coming out of alleys and stuff. Um, and they weren't, they weren't interested in helping us. Uh, they said we had, to, we had to deal with it, which would have meant paying 60 bucks a trailer load to take it to the dump. Um, so we, you know, we were going back and forth and we, uh, we told them, we told Public Works, okay, well, if you're not going to help us, we'll see you on Tuesday night when we dump all of the trash in front of City Hall right before the City Council meeting. <laughs> we got a lot where we were, at, we were told to put the trash and they would pick it up and they picked it up within a day as soon as we said something like that, right? As soon as they realized, like, they're going to load this up in trunks, trucks and they're going to dump it in front of City Hall. And then they're going to go in and tell them why we got a victory right and those people if at later meetings were talking about who in the community was going to run against the city councilman that didn't even show up for the community cleanup who lived in the neighborhood two blocks away from where we were doing it right and so that little the, the relationships that you build those little wins that you show them they can get all of a sudden have motivated them to, to overthrow you know the per, the the misleadership that they have representing them at the time so you know how do we get past it it's all about those relationships 
And, um, you know, the only people who are getting the Republicans and Democrats stuff are the Republicans and Democrats. They're ignoring the 50%. <laughs> yeah, they are. So 